Hi, I'm Andy Hill from University of Missouri. I'm a wide receiver coach, and today we're going to talk about wide receiver skills and drills, trying to make your receivers better players. We're going to start off first with catching the football and ball drills as we go through our daily routines here at the University of Missouri. Okay, the first thing we want to be able to do as a wide receiver is obviously catch the football. You want to get off the, the jam coverage, you want to be able to run your route correctly, then you have to catch the football. And the most important thing we do is catch the football as a wide receiver. And one of the most important things is where you're going to place your hands. And in relationship to the, to the receiver here, we would like to be able to catch the ball out in front of your jersey numbers, about a foot or so in front of it, with a slight bend in your elbow. And what we try to teach our, our young receivers as they come in is if the ball is from to the bottom of your jersey numbers or up, you would have your thumbs together and try to form a triangle whereby you catch the front end of that football and trying to catch it around the stripe and forming a triangle to catch the football. If you catch the ball below your numbers, what you want to be able to do is have your little fingers together and form a basket down below. If you catch it around your knees or around your ankles, Anything below the bottom of your numbers, the hand placement is real important. Probably the hardest part is to decide is on a dig route. As a receiver comes out of a dig route, and as we look at this, he comes out of a dig route, where to catch the football? What we're trying to teach our guys is if the, if the football is out in front of their body, we're trying to get them to catch the football with their thumbs together from the middle of their body towards the quarterback. If the ball is past their body, what they're tr trying to do is put their little fingers together and form a web where the ball is past middle to the middle of their body, past their body. We're trying to catch the football in the, in the web or with our little fingers together. And that is very difficult as you're coming straight down the line as the quarterback's throws coming to you. Okay, w one other focus we have as far as catching the football is really looking the football into your hands, and what we call catching the football with your eyes. In college, we have uh, half the football is covered with laces and stripes and words. And the other half basically is, is blank. And at the University of Missouri, what we try to teach our guys is any and every drill that we do, you can look the ball into your hands. And if you see this half that has all the writing on it, we say words. If you see the half that is completely blank, we say blank out loud. So any drill you incorporate, catching the football, you can look at a guy and see whether he's looking the football into his hands by calling. He, see, he sees words, he says words. He sees blank, he says blank. And as we look through here, Thompson will be catching them some footballs, and has he looked the ball in? Blank. Sees blanks, call out blanks. Proper hand placement, always trying to tuck the football away. Blank. Words. Okay, good. All right. Sometimes the ball might be half and half, where you see half of each, and he'll say, see half? Half. And says half. And each guy, we're trying to, to make sure that you can do this through any drill that we have. Uh, and as, as you do this, as you look the ball into your hands, you always want the ball to focus all the way in through. The most important thing is when you're catching the football, as the ball is coming to you, is to keep your eyes on it all the way into your hands and then into your tuck. And we're talking about tucking the ball away as you tuck and, lean, and look it with your eyes, tuck the ball into, into your position with your eyes, you'll actually protect the football, would be able to run with the football with a better body position by doing that. And they also, uh, when we catch the football, we want five points of pressure around the football. As we look it in, call it out. Words. Okay, he says words. We want five points of pressure here because any time the defensive back is college or in high school trying to strip him, we want him to have great, great leverage on the football, what we call ball leverage. We want five points of pressure. One will be the eagle claw where you don't want your fingers over the end. You want your fingers spread over the end in case you get hit on a helmet there which would cause you to cause have pain for the receiver and drop the football. Another point of pressure is against his forearm where he's squeezing the ball uh, into his body against, to, against his ribs. Another point of pressure we want right now is with his, uh, his elbow squeezing into his body as he runs with the football. You don't want the ball flailing out away from your body because anybody coming from behind can pull the ball out. 
Another po uh, point of pressure we have is with the palm of the, of the hand. And the palm of the hand is, is obviously great for grip. And then the last point of pressure we have is against your ribs, and you can run with the football against your ribs the whole time. One thing we do here, and I think it's maybe different for some, is uh, we always pick a spot we'd like to have the ball on our outside arm. Now, sometimes that's not possible because we may cut back across the field, we may uh, run a certain route, catch the ball, and it's that's the only hand we have it in. But once we put, pick a hand or an arm to put the ball into, we do never, we never switch the football. We do not switch the football at all. So once we've made our choice, whether it's our inside arm or our outside arm, we are not going to switch the football here at the University of Missouri. In catching the football, the thing we have to do is focus on is catching the football into our hands and incorporate that into the ball drills we do every single day. And one of the drills we do every single day is what I call straight at you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the receivers on a line in single file. They're going to be coming at me when I pat the ball. They're going to look the ball into their hands and then tuck the ball away. What we'd like for them to do every single time is tuck the ball away, for example, into his right arm the first time. The next time through, he would like to tuck the ball into his left arm so we can get the habit of putting the ball in either arm where you don't have a dominant hand. In this case, a straight at you drill will be nice and easy. I'm the quarterback. I'll pat the ball. He comes at me, looks the ball in, and he calls out right, uh, blanker words. It's half and half in this case. We'll just keep, keep going through, pat the ball. Receiver comes mat at me, looks it in, hands the ball to me, and goes to the back of the line. I pat the ball. The other receiver comes at me. Good. You got words. Now, the main thing is we caught the ball in the right hand and tucked it away the last time. Now we'll go opposite arm as we tuck the ball away in every time. Over-exaggerating, catching the football into your hands in practice. Very good. Over-exaggerating everything you do. The thing about this drill for receivers is coming at a, at a quarterback or coming back for a curl route, this is probably one of the hardest things they have to do is, is run a straight ahead and not wanting to stop their feet but keep, keep running through the football. As we do this, the guys that are really comfortable with catching the football in their hands will continue running towards, towards me and towards the quarterback, throwing the football to them. Right. Very good. And the main thing is, again, over-exaggerate, catch the ball into your hands in practice, look at it into your tuck, and having five great points of pressure. And I think that our, our receivers here do a nice job of, of having the, their hands in their proper position. If I throw a low ball, if I throw a low ball, they get their hands down and, and be able to adjust the football. So as we look at this drill, this is one of the, the first drills we do in practice every day. It's a, a straight out of warm-up. It's a nice chance to warm up your hands, and uh, it's a great opportunity for our receivers to get warmed up, uh, catch the football as we look at it. Another great drill for wide receivers, and, and especially for young guys, to find out how comfortable they are with catching the football and the comfort level they have with their hands is what I call the crisscross drill. For myself as a coach of the quarterback, we throw into two receivers, one playing the defensive back who will be crossing in front of the guy who will be the receiver. And all he's trying to do is just kind of harass him a little bit, put his hands up, not deflect or touch the football, but we want to be able to, to adjust to the, to the ball as it's thrown to us in the air. And the, and the receiver catching the football still wants to call out blanking words, and he wants to be able to catch the ball in stride without having to stop his movement. As we go here, we'll pat the ball, start him. He'll look the ball in his hands. Out. Call out what we see, what he sees, and we'll come right back here. Pat and go. Word. Very good. We're coming across here. We want to keep about a 10-yard separation. If the, if the, if the defensive back uh, were to get right in front of his path, he sometimes loses uh, eye contact with the football, and that's all right. But what we're trying to get done is just getting used to a defensive back or a linebacker cutting in front of the football and us not having any problem adjusting that football while it's in the air. Another great drill we're trying to utilize is what we call the sideline drill. And in that drill, we're trying to incorporate other skills we do in route running. It's great for an out or a comeback along the sideline. We're trying to maintain our speed, utilize our, our good conditioning out of a break, staying low, pumping our elbows and our arms. And then lastly, it's trying to keep our feet in bounds. In college, we only need one foot in bounds. But in this case, we're trying to get as many choppy steps as we can towards the out-of-bounds line and try to get both feet uh, in bounds in this drill. In this drill, what we want to make sure we do is we, we utilize our ability to come out of our break quick and then chopping our feet in bounds here. As we come out of our break full speed, we want to be able to come out, 
Catch the ball, chop our feet, and stay in bounds. Good. Each guy goes through. He wants to be able to come out of his break, stay low, come out of his break, catch the football, and chop his feet and make sure he's in bounds. If the ball's thrown wildly outside of him, in college, again, you just want to make sure one foot stays in bounds. He can drag his back foot as he's coming across the line. And I think that if you over-exaggerate like you do every other drill you have, over-exaggerate. If you, if you need one foot in bounds, put two in bounds when you're practicing. And I think this drill is good because you can do two or three things and then catch a football at the end of it. Another really great drill when the ball's in the air to have the receiver adjust to the ball is called the wrong shoulder drill. As we'll do this drill, what we're going to do is again pat the ball. We'll start the receiver down the line. He's looking for the ball in a normal fade route. A lot of times he'll be seven to nine yards inside the out of bounds stripe. The ball can be thrown two or three yards outside of his shoulder. And how he gets to that football is real key in catching the football. We'll call this the wrong shoulder drill. What we're going to try to do is the, the, the ball is thrown, the receiver will see it being thrown outside of him. He'll want a hard plant step and he needs immediately to adjust to the football. He needs to snap his head around on that plant step to find the football in the air. As we go through it, the ball's in, he sees it, throwing around, adjust to the football. As, as we have it right here, nice and easy. He's looking for the ball. He sees it's outside of him. He finds it, and the ball's thrown behind you. You want to make sure you always stop to catch the football, plant your feet, seize it, plant the head, pop the head, turn the head on your plant step every single time. The wrong shoulder drill is, uh, is one that you'll probably get into a situation maybe a couple times a game at the very most, uh, maybe five times a year. But when it happens, it can usually end up being a big play for you because you've thrown the ball 30 or 40 yards down the field and your receiver can adjust the football. It's a great thing to do. It's your hope that every quarterback throws a perfect ball every time. But in this case, uh, what we're trying to overemphasize with our receiver today is, is called the bad ball drill, whereby the ball is thrown in several different locations around his body whether it's high or outside or low or between the legs, we want to make sure that we have practiced that in a, in a practice situation. When we go into a game, we feel comfortable catching that football this way. So what I do is I line my receivers across the straight line as we face them. And we want to be able to see the ball being thrown. And as they, as they adjust the ball, it could be a curl route, could be a dig, could be uh, sometime they have to stop and catch the football. We want to be able to adjust the football no matter where it's thrown. The receivers have a slight bend in their knees. They're ready for the ball to be thrown anywhere in a spot around their body. Could be high, could be outside. They're going to move their body to catch the football. And as I throw the football, sometimes it may be a knuckleball type throw, but they want to focus on catching the football and tucking the ball away in their, in their hand. Every single time you'll notice their, their eyes, their face mask would be on the football no matter where it's thrown, inside, outside. And good hand location, again, is real proper in the fact if the ball's thrown high, you're going to be able to get your hands up. This is one situation where we do want the receivers to have their hands below their waist. Uh, most times, we, we prefer not to have the hands below the waist at any time, just because of the high throw. The bad ball drill is one that we'll see every day, we'll see every game, and one that if you practice it, you'll feel a lot better about it when situations arise in your game time situations. Okay, there's also times in practice when your receivers may be during two days, They've ran a lot of routes. They want to be able to uh, keep their legs fresh for possibly a game coming up to get their legs back into them. And so what we do is we have our guys line up across the line, uh, pick out this, in this case, it's a goal line, and we'll have them stand in place and I'll throw the ball into several different areas and situations. Could be a fade route, could be coming back to a curl route, an out route. But all these scenarios, they're not running their legs or keeping their legs fresh. And so what I'll do now first, I'll just throw the ball to them as we face them. They'll call it out, look it in. Word. They'll face me. I'll go, I'll go through all the line of receivers, however many I may have, and they'll, they'll look the ball in, tuck it away, turn the face this way. And now they're coming across the field here, so we'll move around, and they can, they can stand in place. They're getting the ball caught at different angles. They're doing the same thing as, as if they were running uh, to go catch a dig route in this case. And so what I'll do is I'll move them around as we go. And now they'll face the opposite direction. They caught one going to the left. They'll catch one going to the right. Again, in practice here, we're always trying to over-exaggerate every single thing we do and catch the ball into your hands. Good job switching the ball from arm to arm as we do this. The next thing we'll do is we'll emulate a fade route. And so the ball, he can stand in there, and the ball will be thrown over the shoulder. He'll be moving to the football where they're only moving a couple, three yards every single time 
and they're still getting the benefit of catching the ball at the proper angle on a fade that they want to be able to do. Pass. Looking at it, they walk into it, don't get a lot of energy. The next thing we might do is, is run the end of a curl route. It's a finishing play. If we run a 14-yard curl, we'll just say they've ran like 10 yards, and now we'll finish the route with an extra four yard coming back to the ball and then taking a step up the field after they catch it. Just, just come at me. Go up, come back, you go, go, come back, everything's right. Good, and then just getting up the field, just the momentum up the field. Again, everybody just taking their turn, go. Comes out of his break, comes back to the football, working on the end of a curl route and not having to run the entire 15 yards or however deep you run the route to run the last four or five yards of it, coming back and fighting their foot. Okay, now I'll do the same thing with an out route. I'm going to switch locations as the quarterback. Uh, just we're going to reverse out here on the out route. Again, the same last thing, same last five yards of route set, go. Come out of your break, coming back downhill, and catch the football, getting up field. Not trying to run the full amount of the route. Set, go. Pat the ball, they come out of their break, throw the football, and still, and you're, again, you're utilizing the sideline type drill. The receivers are running. They're getting the better part of the route that they need. And uh, a lot of times that's, that's the difference between, uh, you know, just ball location, different type of routes, and you can always uh, add any kind of route that you want there, the finish of the route, or hand location. I think in our drills, what we're trying to really get done is to emulate any game situation you might have. In this case, what we're going to try to do is have uh, one of our receivers play uh, game, game fake, a linebacker spot, and we're going to run in and come behind him and run the dig route. And so as a receiver, a lot of times if you're running the crossing route across the middle here, the ball will be coming to you and you'll be catching, catching the ball right behind the defender. And so in this case, we're pretending that he's a linebacker. We're going to run the latter part, the last five yards of our dig route, and the receiver will catch the ball as soon as he crosses what would be a linebacker in this case. Set, go. Comes out of his break, shoves it out, and here comes the ball to him. Same thing here, set, go. Come out of your break. One more time. Set, go. Ball's coming out quick, right there. He's good job looking at the football and adjusting the football there. But the main thing we want to be able to do is, again, as a quarterback throwing the football to us, with the more we see it in practice, the better we're going to be on game day. One of the best drills we do as a wide receiver here at the University of Missouri is what we call the ball fade drill. And the ball fade drill really can get you big plays. And, and the main thing we're trying to get down here is get used to the, the receivers getting used to catching the football, adjusting to the football on a fade route or a deep pass, being able to be comfortable with the defender running next to you, and incorporating several different things. It's also a great drill when you come out of stretch to get your players warmed up where they don't have to go full speed every single second of this drill but they're getting the fundamentals of where to line up, how to have landmarks down the field, how to feel good with the guy running next to you, and getting comfortable catching the deep ball and adjusting to it in the air. The thing we'll do is we'll have them go through a single file here first. And, and we want to line up on the numbers because we want to have our landmark and outside edge of the numbers, I'll pat the ball. Each guy will pretend that we're going to be catching the football. We'll tell the receivers before the drill is done, whether it's a three-step drop or a five-step drop, so they know when to, uh, to make their break and stay, stay, stay down there, please, and, and get open. As we look at it, they're going to look the ball in. They're going to call out blanking words so I can hear them from here. I'll have each receiver go through single file, and I'll try to make a good throw, as good a throw as possible. Now, when I'll have them stay down here on the far end because I want them to catch the ball over the right shoulder. For example, in this case, the first time, then they'll catch the ball over the left shoulder the second time. Looking the ball in as they come through here, they're trying to hold the numbers as much as possible. Good. Another great point that we can have is catching the ball at the highest point if the ball is underthrown or somewhere else that, that you can go up and get it. You want to be able to do that. Now, the second time through, we'll have them go uh, individually again, single file. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an attempt at a bad ball throw, which should be pretty easy for myself. But I'm going to throw the ball somewhere behind them, inside them, way outside where they have to adjust to the ball being thrown. And what we'll do is he'll have to adjust to it. He'll find it. 
and you'd like to be able to, if you can, as a receiver stop, go up and get the ball as highest point. I may throw it inside, we have to come and get it, and then look the ball in their hand. Right. Same thing, stop, catch the football, and it's a bad ball drill with the fade because the ball, uh, with, with the ball being thrown 30 or 40 yards down the field, they still have to be able to adjust it. It's 10 yards or 30 yards, they've got to be able to find the football and make the catch. Catching the ball with two hands at all times, same thing, bad ball drill. Come and stop and get it, good. Words. Or, or throw it outside of them and make them go up and get it. Blanks. One more time. Good. Knowing where you're on the field is very critical. Now, the next step in this drill, in the ball fade drill, is have these receivers pair up. And so, in utilizing this drill, what we can is you can work on your stance. There's several portions of this drill that are really good for football fundamentals and wide receiver play. One is the stance. You want to have a good stance every time you start out. Don't, uh, don't go up there haphazardly and not get in a great stance every time. The next thing is you can work on jam releases versus defensive backs. And so what we'll do is, if you have 12 receivers, we'll have six pairs of guys. One will be the defensive back, one will be the wide receiver. And now we've done the same thing we've just been doing, except now we put a defender next to our wide receiver. We want to be able to work our releases here. We want to be able to know where our landmarks are. In our case, we'd like to be on the outside edge of the numbers uh, for a fade route. And the next thing is we want to get comfortable with the defensive back being next to us. And so as we do this, we want the defensive back not just to help out with the release, but to run side by side with the defender all the way down the, uh, with the receiver all the way down the field as a defender and make sure that he, he is uh, comfortable with the ball catching next to him. Get up, good. Now we'll do the same thing, we'll come back down and, and uh, we'll switch up. Now the guy who just caught the ball as a wide receiver will be the defensive back. And so the same thing, we'll work on the releases, holding the numbers and then finding the football, feeling yeah. comfortable with the defensive back next to you. As the next drill, just like we did before, single file wise, is we want to be able to come back and go with a bad ball drill with the defender next to you. And so Thompson, you'll be up. Work a release, same thing, hold the numbers here, but then the ball may be thrown behind you, have to swim the defender, whatever he may be, to go get the football. Bad ball drill, he'll stop and catch it, and then adjust the football, looking it in the whole time. One more time, the guys will be coming back here. And you can do this and throw the ball 10 yards, 30 yards. Again, I'll tell the receivers, hey guys, this is a three-step drop, and you want to be able to make your plant at around five yards, or if it's a five-step drop, you've got to know when to get open on the fade route. And this is real critical. So let's say right now, we say it's a five-step drop, okay? AB will be going down to 10 yards before he makes his break, so make sure that you avoid down there and I'll throw behind you. Here comes the ball, he makes a break. Now he sees it and adjusts to it. Ball fade drill for us is, uh, is real critical coming out of the stretch, being able to catch the football, and you can make big plays out of uh, just being able to adjust to the football with this drill. Okay, the next section of our drills uh, we're gonna do is, is basically releases. And one of the most important parts of a release is your start. And we call this the stance and start drill. Once you get your play in the huddle, you hustle to the line, you know what the play is. You want to get a good alignment, and you want to be able to come off the ball and show the defensive back the same thing every single time, which is full speed off the football. What we're trying to get done with our receivers is stance and start. In this case, we want to have our hands up in front of our numbers. We want to, it, it, basically what we do is we put our inside foot up. In this case, if the quarterback is over to the right of the, of the receiver, we will have our right foot up and slightly turn our toe into our body for balance with our front and our lead foot. The back leg has a slight bend in it, and the back heel, you just want to have one inch or so off the ground. A big mistake young receivers will make is they'll have their back heel straight up, they'll be on their toe, and the first thing they have to do to push off is drop down and then push off. Show them how to drop, if you can't have it too high, hey B, and then drop down and push off. All right, you have to drop to that point. Each receiver is different. Some guys are taller than others. Some guys have different builds. The main thing is to be able to get comfortable in your stance. And if you'd be able to stand there and watch the football for any, you know, a minute or two as we do this. The main thing we're also going to be doing is watching the football. We do not want to be able to move unless the ball moves. And so what I'll do as the quarterback, or the coach in this case, is I'll snap the ball and each guy will come off the ball running. 
We do think it's real important we have our hands up in front of our numbers because we don't want to change uh, our stance from when there's a defensive back in front of us or a defensive back who's off and maybe cover three or seven or eight yards off of you in man-to-man. -man. We want to be looking the same. One thing we also try to do is bend down to keep our numbers down so we do not get, uh, give a good surface area for the defensive back to jam us. And so what will come off right now is just come off on air. I'll have all the receivers line up, all snap the ball. They'll go on my snap, not on the sound, but on what they see visibly, the, the ball being moved here. So all receivers are up. I'll say a few words, and they're going on my, on my movement. Ha! As soon as the ball snapped, they're coming off for five yards. I'll have the entire group go through. I'll move down to them so they get the ball inside with their left foot up or their right foot up. Either way we're going, I'll move the ball off the line on occasion so they can get used to where the ball is going to be and they can come off. They're going on the movement. Good. Obviously, you don't want any wasted movement. You want all areas, your toes, your ankles, your knees, your elbows, your hands, all moving in a straight line forward. And so no wasted movement is real critical in this drill. One other thing we try to be able to do, if you're the backside receiver and you're trying to cut off a free safety to go block him, we call cross field technique. And so with cross field technique, we'll bring our back foot up a little bit tighter. Scoot your back foot up there, AB. And what we want to be able to do is gain ground with our inside step across this white line. You'll be able to see here, he steps across the line, set, hit. He's going to be able to go across and take a good angle. There is times where he will do that with a, with a corner route to gain some inside leverage with the defensive back. We'll come off across here. Thompson will do the same thing, cross field technique. Set, hit. Looking inside. Here we go. Set, hit. Gain ground. You still don't want to have any false steps. Your first movement should be across the field there as we look at this drill. The stance and start, one, one really good drill will do, if you'd be the defensive back out here, We'll call this the rabbit drill in this same sense of start drill. And what we want to be able to do when the ball snaps is to break the cushion down on the defender. We'll line an imaginary defensive back up at around eight yards from the ball. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to snap the ball. On the snap, the defensive back will start backpedaling. As a receiver, we'd like to run up on him and break down his cushion within that first 12 yards. So basically, when the ball snaps, the DB has four yards to backpedal. And we as receivers want to get up on him and try, to, and try to run to either shoulder at 12 yards. So we're breaking down the cushion. We're breaking down the cushion here of the defensive back by coming up the ball hard. Then hit. Run, run, run. DB's backpedaling. Backpedal is, is a little bit more uh, speed there to get to the backpedal. But we want to be able to run up. And we call it the rabbit drill because we want to break down the defensive back's cushion on, this, on the uh, stance to start. The next step, once you've gone through your stance and start, is really being able to get off the football in several different types of releases. Whether it's a jam release where you have a defensive back right in front of your face in a press type coverage, possibly a cover two defensive back or a cover three defensive back. What we're going to work through now is just basically uh, jam releases for the wide receiver. And with the, with the defender right in your face in the, in the press coverage type technique we're going to see in this conference. The thing we have to be able to do is make the defensive back move. One of the basic points I try to emphasize with our receivers is you have to have one good release. And one of the base releases most of our guys will use is a swat and swim release. Now with that, the base release is good, but we also have to need a few change ups from that. But we'll go back right now and talk about just the basics of our swat and swim release. And with that, we have a defensive back out in front of the wide receiver. The defensive back will squat down, he'll have his hands up. The main thing we want to try to be able to do is have this defensive back move his foot one way, just move your foot there, move it over one way we want him to do that, possibly have to lean his body one way, or anything we can do to try to get that defensive back to, do, to move. As he's squared up here, Thompson will look uh, into the football over here, ball's in, we know where the defensive back is, so our stance never changes. As the ball snaps, we want to work quick hands and quick feet. We want to work to his shoulder. In this case, he'll work to his, to his right shoulder. Set, hit. Good. Good. Okay. Defensive back will stay in place. Just work your quick hands and quick feet. We'll kind of build as we go through this. And so the basics of our, of our uh, swat and swim drill will be the quick hands and quick feet that we try to utilize. Okay, this time with the defensive back, you're trying to hit the defensive back as you come off. 
his inside hand is trying to keep you from going inside. We want to hit from the wrist to the elbow. Anything beyond that, what you're trying to get done is, is pretty much counterproductive because if we, if we hit above to the shoulder pad of the bicep, he can get his hand on our ribs and stop our momentum. We want to be able to hit from the wrist to the, to the elbow to knock and turn him sideways. So as we come off quick hands, quick feet, set, go, boom. We want to hit right there and take a couple steps. Now, in building this, okay, what we'd like to be able to do is come out, take a couple quick steps, jab back, swat and swim, and release around the side here, okay. Key points of the swat and swim as we do this. Defensive back has his arm up. We want to be able to swat the direction we're going, or our lead hand, if we're going to our right, the lead hand, we, you must have your fingers up when you're doing this. If you have your fingers straight out or down, you have a tendency to grab and try to throw the defensive back when you get a hold of his arm, and then all of a sudden you're losing your power base and turning your shoulders, when the whole point of this is for us to have the defensive back turn his shoulders as I go. And so as I do this, I want to be able to have my hands up and hit my fingers to the sky is what we say, instead of straight out or down, okay? That's the SWAT part of the SWAT and swim. The second part of this is going to be the swim move. Now, the swim move, once we've done the SWAT, sometimes the hand for the defensive back is in place and is there, sometimes it's not. The swim move is more of a power stroke as we want to SWAT real quick. Go ahead and SWAT. Boom. Now, the swim move is going to be one where you're trying to punch through and at face mask level. What you want to try to keep from doing is raising your hand above the helmet of the defender, okay? And sometimes if you have a six foot five wide receiver and a five foot eight defender, it's hard to not do that. But in this case, we want to be able to punch through where we're trying to reach for the backside pad or to the tricep of the def defensive back so we can get his momentum going in the opposite direction that we want to be going down the field. The best case scenario for us is again, as we're going to our right this case, we're coming off with quick hands, we jab back, we swat, and we swim like we're trying to punch him in the mouth or at face mask level, and then we get a hold of his backside of his pads, whereby his hips and my hips are parallel, he's facing the wrong direction, and I'm, I'm facing the direction I want to go. Along with this, what I'll do as a coaching point is I'll get behind the defender. You guys go ahead. And so and with, with the quick hands and quick feet, we want to be able to come out side of the frame of the defensive back. And so as I get behind the DB, if I don't see the helmet or the head in this case of the receiver coming outside the body, then I know he's not really working to his shoulder and trying to make that defensive back move off his post. Okay, so let's go to the other way here, Thompson. Work outside the shoulder, set, hit, good, squat and swim. And now as we, as we get by him, really we're starting right in the middle of our numbers. And as we do these drills, what you want to be able to do, swat, swat and swim, boom, you swat and swim, come around, you want to get back in on the defender here so as, so as you do not lose too much width from your original alignment. And the original alignment, again, is right here in the middle of the numbers. Five yards down the field, you, want, you do not want to be four yards wider than you originally were. In that case, the defensive back is beating you. He's trying to push you outside of a cylinder, basically at arm's length from around him, and we want to be able to keep that cylinder and keep our original line as much as we can down the field, okay? So as we go outside, just balls in here, run a fade, okay? Balls in here, run a fade route, set, go, come outside, and then hold those numbers. Get right back in on where your original alignment is so you're not losing more than one yard down the field. As we come back also, again, key coaching point for these guys is this may not always work. You might have the off hand of the defender. I'll play it right here, excuse me. He's coming outside on an outside release here. He, he may have a swat and swim, not be there. He'll have an off hand. The backside swim hand is always trying to, to maintain and lose contact with that defensive back. As we come off, you're trying to make sure within that first five yards, you make every effort to have that defensive back lose contact with you. At the same time, you want to be on your correct landmark as we go through this. And keep it right along with our SWAT and swim release. What we want to be able to do, again, is what we call hold our landmark. Now, as we go through this, again, within five yards of the football, we put cones down so the defender is now trying to push us out of the cylinder. We want to be able to try to work back to the cylinder. So one release that will work very well is 
going outside, getting outside the shoulder the way we want to go, coming outside, jabbing back, holding the defender, and then getting around him. Ultimately, what we're trying to get done as a wide receiver is get into the trail position. And the trail position is when you're around the de defensive back, he is now chasing you from behind, and you, you're directly in front of him, right in front of him there, AB. That's the trail position where you've got the defensive back right behind you. Any slight little move one way or the other, he'll overreact to, and then you can get open on your route. So we'll come back here and show that we want to go outside release, go a couple steps out, jab back, and then take a release, but get to the cone. Look inside here, Haby. Look inside. Set, go. Jab and go, good. Then working back through that cone so we can maintain what our original alignment is. The better we do that, uh, the less we get pushed out of the cylinder or away from our original alignment and stay on our train tracks, the better off we're going to be uh, trying to get the ball down the field. Now, with the ball fade drill, what we just uh, one of the ball fade drills we've done today is you want to have a landmark of a certain point on the field. In this case, it's one yard from our original alignment. We want to be outside one yard, no more than that. So now we give the quarterback a nice big room to make a great throw. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a poor throw, we have a lot of room to adjust to the route. As we do this, you'll see that there are several different releases. One being an inside hard release, like you're going to run a corner route. Just turn your back and come in side, side flat. Say it, go. Turn it in. Boom. Now you're back inside. You've gained room uh, with this release. You get pushed sometimes downfield, but you also have just, tr for example, trying to run a corner route here. As we do that, you're, again, trying to work through the trail position. Come on back. We'll do it again, guys. This time, come hard. You want to line up on the inside edge of the numbers. Hard inside and get him in the trail from the side of the top of him, okay? Look it into the ball. Say it. Go. Good. Right. Good move. Good. What A.B. just has done is he's, he's released hard inside. Kind of a variation from our swat and swim move, but a change up because now the defensive back is trying to, to take away the inside. But we come so much at a flat angle, now we have our back exposed to him, we can slide back and get in that trail position with the defensive back directly behind us. Any slight move inside, he'll overreact to, then we can run our corner out and get open in this case. Okay, with these drills, uh, the release drills, what we'll do a lot of times, we'll pair up. We may have 10 or 12 or 14 wide receivers, and we'll pair up in groups of two across a line of scrimmage here, in this case it's a 10 yard line, and one half of the side will be receivers, the other half will be defensive backs. And what we'll do is, as, as receivers, we'll work three releases on the outside going away from the football. So this time, all the receivers will be going, all as the coach call out, say, set, hit, set, hit, boom, we'll swat and swim, we'll just go five yards up the field, we'll go back. We'll go quick hands, quick feet, do the same thing, set, hit, slot and swim, come up the field, and get on your original alignment. Now, after a couple of reps, we'll go and go the inside. For example, a quick slant route. Thank you. For example, a quick slant route, we'll do the same thing. We'll come inside. Set, hit, slot, swim, and we'll come inside on the slant route. Now, we'll take turns. Now, the defensive backs will become the receivers, and they'll take three releases to, the, to, the, to their outside in this case. Here we go. Set, hit, good. Working back in on their original alignment as much as they can. They'll take three reps that way, and then they'll come inside here also. Here we go. Going inside on the slant route. Looking inside, Hoss. Say it, hit. Good. So as we do this, what we're trying to utilize is as many receivers getting reps with the, with the swat and swim move as we can or any other release we might have. Now again, uh, as a change up to the swat and swim releases, if you have a young man who's a, a really big player, you know, he could be tall or he could be uh, really strong, you have a change up here that you can utilize versus a swat and swim. In this case, we're pretending now that, that we have a big receiver versus a smaller defensive back. A change up would be, instead of working on the swat and swim, will be just a, a simple a power move with a, with a power stroke on the outside shoulder of the pad of the, of the defensive back. We're going to our left here. But what we're trying to get done is the same thing. Quick hands, quick feet. We're trying to put the defensive back out of position. We're doing that with force this time by hitting with an outside pad. Here we go. Say it, go. Hit him on there. All right, all right. Go ahead. It's all right. Some defensive backs are better than others. What we've got right now, you're trying to move him just by hitting him and making him move off the point. Here we go.
set, go. Good. Now you've done the same thing, but because you have a different ability, which in this case is size or strength, you're trying to push him by a good arm bar, either on the shoulder pad or the bicep, with a, just a power stroke and utilizing probably a surprise technique to some defensive back. Okay, again, you want to be able to use your talents. And if you have a quick receiver who is super quick on the ball, who sometimes you want him to avoid the contact, where he doesn't even come in contact with any press or any jam by the defensive back, you want him to get away from the line as quickly as possible. Sometimes he can run around this. He knows, however, that he needs to be back as close to his original alignment and on to what he wants to do and not what the defensive back is doing. So he may have a lot of quickness here. We're going to take a one quick jab, get out of there, and run inside here on a quick slant. Set, go, bang, boom. Quick jab and go. He may take one step. It's not recommended for guys that, uh, that have average size or, or average quickness. But if you have a real quick guy, you can make one jab step and get out of the way of the defensive back. It's a great technique to change up from your swat and swim technique. This way, we'll go the other way. Just a quick jab hard inside and get out of there. Looking for the ball. Set, go. Good. Now run right back and trying to get back on his original alignment as quick as he can. I think one of the greatest things a wide receiver can do is be able to come to the line of scrimmage and read the intent of the defender. In this case, I'm going to play the defensive back. And the releases we've been talking about, the swat and swim, the arm bar, the quickness, all those things can be utilized as you look at the defend defensive back. If the defensive back comes up and he has a wide base, he has his arms cocked like he's going to try to jam you, more than likely he is going to try to do that. And so we have to be cognizant of what he's trying to, to show us by his stance. Defensive back again is showing us that he's trying to jam us. We must use our releases we've been talking about. But if the defensive back has a tight, narrow base, or possibly a staggered stance, more than likely what they're going to do is they're going to open up the gate for us to be able to run. Now, we don't need to waste time on the offensive side of the ball by chopping our hands and chopping our feet if we know the defensive back is going to let us run clean. And so we're going to help the defensive back when he opens up the gate by, if we're going this way to the outside, he's going to push and try to push my bicep so I open up and I can have a clean uh, shot running down the field. So the defensive back again, he's showing us right now he's got a staggered stance, not one where we think he's going to jam us hard, and he's going to open up on the, on the snap, he's going to come off and push the set hit, he's going to open up, and now I'm chasing. And, and we have to be aware again of any defensive back trying to put his hand on our hips to slow our momentum down. We want to be able to swipe as we run, swipe that hand off and be able to maintain uh, the spot on the field and landmark that we want, not what the defensive back is showing us. And so the same thing is true here. If we have a tight, tight stance, defensive back is showing us, saying hit, or open up, and you're pushing that guy. Now he's, we're, we're running faster downfield. We're not wasting a lot of time at the line of scrimmage that you normally would with the defensive back showing you a wide base and an intent to jam you at the line of scrimmage. OK, also, with our uh, releases, we want to work on what a lot of people will see, which is a cover two corner or a hard jam corner, five to six yards off on the football here. And so what we want to be able to do as a wide receiver is to hold that defensive back in the spot we need it to be. Sometimes we're going to outside release the guy. Sometimes we're going to inside release him. We want him to be in the spot we need him to be. In this case, we're going outside of him. What we don't want the, the defensive back to do is to widen the ball snap so we don't have any room to run our route. We want to have an aiming point of his, his outside armpit where he maintains his, his spot on the field he doesn't widen out as a defensive back. And the receiver's going down there to swat and swim. He want to make sure that we get close enough to step on his toes, do the same thing we did with a jam uh, uh, defensive back right in our face. Chop your hands, chop your feet, swat and swim, and get on your landmark. Here we go. Say it, go. Get up, close enough, uh, close enough exactly like that to step on his toes. Uh, one of the big errors guys, young receivers will make, they'll come up a couple yards, and then they'll try to widen too quick. That defensive back will accommodate that uh, width we're doing, and then he'll be able to widen and jam us right out of bounds. By doing that, where we get, we run up on him, and every once in a while, what you'll do as a wide receiver, you'll go up and hit him in a block, and he, you're gonna think, he's going to think you're running a, a route or something. You'll hit him. So we're coming off the ball hard and, uh, and going to his outside shoulder. If we're going to run a curl route or have an inside route where we need to keep the guy here, what we'll do is we'll go to his inside shoulder, do the same thing. And we may want to have a landmark of just the inside edge of the number down by the cone there. We'll come in, the shoulder here, set, go. 
Post up, step on his toes, boom. Squat and swim, get it right around him. Good. Very good. And so as we do this, as we do this, the main thing is, if you take a release and get two or three yards away from the defender and you go a certain way, he's going to come down and jam you because you let him do that. We want to hold him right where he is by working to his shoulder, not in the middle of his body, but to the direct line of an armpit either side of his, uh, his body and through his numbers, and we can get open a lot better doing that. We have uh, another release we want to look at is a, is a cover three release or uh, possibly a man-to-man -man release, a guy where the defender is off of you about seven yards as a wide receiver and more than likely playing a yard or so inside of you. As we look at this, most defensive backs, as they set in their coverage, are going to be watching the quarterback for the first three-step drops. They're going to be playing sort of a clue technique so they can see the three-step drop and be able to react to it. While they're doing that, we, for, as a receiver, need to be getting up and breaking down the cushion of the defensive back. And for example, if we're running a post route, we want to go from having outside leverage on the defensive back to inside leverage when he's not even looking at us but paying attention to the quarterback. So when the ball snapped here, and the ball snapped here, we're trying to go on a post route, say it, go, our receiver's going to work inside to his inside shoulder and get close enough to step on his toes with speed but also some intensity, the fact that we need to be on an inside shoulder on a, on a post route, for example. And the same thing would be true on a fade route. We may want to come off the ball while he's watching the quarterback as he's backpedaling, get to his outside shoulder. Go a fade route here. Say it, go. Come off the ball, looking, looking, boom. Get close enough to step on his toes, and then come off the ball and catch the football as the quarterback throws, and you fade off to get it. We're going to work on some route running techniques, and I think uh, if you can perfect a few of the three-step drop routes, which we'll try to work on here, that uh, you can really utilize these in, in, in game situations whereby the defensive backs and, and you can take a nice easy throw from the quarterback in the three-step game and make a hitch route turn into a big play. What we're going to try to concentrate here as, as a receiver is showing the defensive back that we are going to burst off the football to sell the fade route. We run a, an eight-yard hitch route and what we're going to try to plant our fourth outside step, meaning in this case, AB's fourth left step as we go off the ball here, he's going to maintain his body position, come off jogging, drive his elbows as he runs, make his break, plants his foot, and pops his head at the same time. In running this route, what we're going to try fundamentally, we've got to be able to push off the football and sell the fact we're trying to run a fade route. Also, in that, we want to be able to pump our elbows through our break and take, we want to run an eight-yard hitch route here, we want our fourth outside step to be on eight yards and plant our, and our, plant our foot and turn our head exactly the same time. Set, hit, nice and easy. Hit it, bang, good. Drive your elbows, come back to the ball, turn and run. Okay, now, doing it the wrong way here, uh, the, the way to do it is to come off the ball, the guy will turn his head too quick. Set, hit, he drops his elbows, he drops his arms to his side, and he turns his head too quick. A lot of times the defensive back can read that. As we come off here throwing the football, as we go more full speed with this, You'll catch the football and give a head fake and turn up the field. Like the turn to the outside. Set, go. Stay low, stay low, bang. Good. Turn, head fake, turn outside. Good. As, as a hitch route, you'll have a tendency to want to fake out somebody. All you need is a slight little head fake. The defensive back coming at you, all you have to do is make, catch the ball, little head fake. He makes this false move, and you're out and going, understanding that there's 20 people over here playing football. 10 defensive guys now are chasing you. There's not a lot of reason to turn inside on once you catch a hitch route. You'd like to be able to head fake and turn outside as much as you can. So as we come off the ball here on the hitch route, we got to be able to drive and sell the fade route. Set, go, stay low, keep our body low. Good. Turn up. One coaching point you can make and you can do this by being uh, upfield watching your receivers. But as you run as a receiver, try to drive your chin through the defender. And that will allow you to keep your elbows pumping, keep your numbers down, and go right at the defensive back. Another three-step drop by the quarterback route is a quick slant route by the wide receivers. In this case, we want to be able to come off about six yards, pushing up the field, and making a 45-degree slant. Some receivers don't uh, understand the degree of slant you want to make. So what we do is we put some cones down so the receiver knows the angle he would like to come out of his break. A few coaching points we have is we'd like to maximize our split by being on the outside edge of the numbers, okay? 
So as we do this, we want to be able to push out knowing it's an inside route. And we don't always do this, but this is kind of a basis we start from. We want to push and get some depth here. One of the, one of the easiest things guys do to, to mess this route up is they'll only take a couple steps up the field and they won't get the proper depth and they'll start coming. The defensive back can read that and break a lot quicker than if you push and, sh and sell the fade route here. Okay, so we're coming off the ball. Just want to make sure you hard plant foot your step and come off three quarters. Here we go, set, go. Bang, hard plant. Just one step. Wait. Here we go. Set, go. Stay low, stay low. Good, good. Proper angle Wait. is extremely important and you can coach the angle by putting some cones down every single time that you run this route. As you do it, one of the key points you can make as a wide receiver is you're coming off, you're selling it, you're coming off really hard, and you get to that six yard marker approximately, you want to plant that foot, bang. You want to stick your foot in the ground and make a discernible break towards that uh, 45 degree angle. A lot of guys may, may chop their feet, you don't want them to do that, and you don't want them to just kind of round that route off. You want to plant and make that hard 45 degree angle real easy so the, so the quarterback knows where you're going to be going. Let's go, Andrew. Plant your foot, boom, good. Catch the ball, and then knife up the field here. What, what I mean by knifing up the field, once you catch the football, if you'll just duck your shoulders down and try to get as much vertical possible as you can, you can break the first quick tackle and you can take this one to the house. Okay, a great spacing route for the passing game is a curl route. And one, one if you can run correctly, can be run several different ways, but you need a base way to start doing it. What we're gonna do here is show again, much like the hitch route, the path and the, and the direction and also the technique we want to use by running this route. Now, receiver comes off the ball here, say it hit. He gets right there at 10, he plants, stop right there, stop. Okay, now as he comes in here to the curl part of his route at 14 yards, what you want to do is plant this outside foot he's doing and then turn your inside hip open to the quarterback, right there, and you come barreling back to the front cone as we see it, okay? Now, main thing for us is this, as he comes off, I get back here as a coach. A good coaching point you can do is you can stand right on this cone here, okay? And this receiver would like to make you turn your hips, make the defensive back turn your hips, either outside as he's going to the fade or inside to the post. As I'm doing this, open the hips up because then when you do that, you've got the guy beat. And so what I'll do so I can keep the eye level and the pad level down is I'll bend down here so I can make it maintain the same level as the receiver. Boom, right there he makes his break. Okay, now let's go ahead and run it. You guys get in line here. Just run the route, stay on the outside edge. T.O., make me turn my hips so go to my inside or my outside on this, okay? Set, go. Looking down, plant his foot, boom. Turn my hips and come back, good. The main thing is not standing up is to be able to pump your elbows through your brakes. Don't turn your head and your eyes around until you plant this foot here at 14. Set, go. Looking, 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 plant. Boom, good. Now, if you can help it, A.B., you would like to go again, make the defensive back turn his hips. So if there's two cones here, pick a cone and make me turn my hips. Here we go. Set, go. Plant, boom, turn, go. All right, try it one more time here. Here. There we go. All right, I'm the defensive back. Set, go. Keep your head and eyes downfield. There you go. Good. Come back. Good. Make the guy turn his hips. All right, now we'll throw the football. And the, and the key point is coming back to the football and running this curl route. Again, you want to plant that foot, open your inside hip to the quarterback. The quarterback's aiming point should be right to your inside shoulder as he's seeing you so he knows where you're going to be because you're going to be changing your route up from time to time. So I plant my foot at 10. I stay low and I want to work back. I can put three cones out there at 14. I can come back to the cone at 12. Here we go. Stay, go. stay low, stay low, drop your elbows, drive back. Drive back to the ball, good. Turn up the field, score. One more time, we'll do the same thing. Being able to drive back to the football, don't wait. The defensive back is coming downhill. You need to keep coming back on the curl route. Driving, stay low. Turn up the field. Driving your elbows is real key on the curl route. And if you do that every single time and make the defensive back turn his hips, you'll be able to get open more times than not. Okay, we're going to do a four cone drill that uh, really emphasizes trying to stay low in your brakes and be able to come out of every cut. And really what you're trying to get is a feeling of a heartbeat. Boom, boom. A one-step, two-step break. You're planting the foot, 
you got two steps. You got a momentum step that's going to basically let you sink your hips and get everything under control. And you're going to have a transition step that's going to be, be able to plant and drive that will make that second step one where you can get separation from the defensive back. So what we'll do is we'll have the receivers come up in a drill, come up, make a good plant step, boom, boom, go four more, five more yards around the next cone, then make another boom, boom, quick, quick steps, come out and do the same thing the third time and I'll throw him the football as he comes out so he also catches the ball in this drill. Just a nice four-corner cone drill as we come out. Here we go, set, go. Plant, plant low, stay low. Throw the football as he comes out and he looks it in and tucks it away every single time. Real simple drill. One that we want to be able to, to work on any outbreaks, any dig breaks, any uh, curl or corner breaks we have. Set, go. Boom, boom. Stay low. Come out of your break. Okay. You'd like to be able to do this a little quicker where you have the quickness and you have your plants and you come out of your breaks and get separation from the defensive back is real critical. This along with many other cone drills can be utilized every day in practice. Another great cone drill you can do is the W drill, the M drill. Uh, we want to come off the ball hard and at every cone, make sure we can turn and open our hips and make a, a good sprint to the next cone, trying to utilize sharper angles. One also, you can make it really, really easy for your wide outs or really hard by either widening the drill out or bringing it tighter together where the sharper the angle, it's more tough and more difficult. In this case, this is about average. And also, you want to make sure you throw the football at the end of the drill so they catch a ball every time, every time they take go out. Watch what they're doing. Again, a two-step two plant every single time. Set, go. Boom, boom. Come around. Pump the elbows. Coming out. Come out of that last cone, sprinting, and catching the football. Good. Same thing. Pumping the elbows through the brakes. Set, go. Driving. Bang. Right there. Good. Turn. Turn. Open the hip. That's good. Good. Good job. As we, as we come out of this drill, what you want to be able to do, again, is accelerate from the defensive back. He may be close to you, but you can get a boom, boom, a one-step, two-step uh, plant break, and you're out of there away from the DB catching the football. I hope you can take some segments from this tape and put them into everyday practice and they'll utilize these drills that we have. Whether it's ball drills, releases, or route running skills that you may have, we feel that these have benefited us here at the University of Missouri and we hope they can do the same for you. Good luck.